Hey guys, so I was originally gonna just do something digital and kind of like uh, print it out at Staples and glue it on the back. Um, I wasn't gonna bother trying to do the layered stuff because I kind of had my little tree here and I knew I want, had a background and then I was gonna put maybe a little saran wrap or something in the foreground to create like kind of like a water effect. Um, but instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kind of, I've chosen three images here from National Geographic Magazine, so I kind of have like this little strip that I want to act as the background. I have this here that I'm going to cut out like um, kind of a line to act as the middle ground, and then I have this kind of path here that I've decided I want to be the foreground um, to my tree. And so uh, using, you know, scissors, my X-Acto pen blade just in case, and uh, a handy dandy ruler here, I'm going to do the three different layers for my shadow box. I've got my shadow box, I've got my little tree here, and I've got a bunch of cardboard that I'm going to be kind of gluing my backing onto just to give it some um, some sturdiness. These are just like popsicle popsicle cardboards, and they're nice because they're kind of a little bit flimsier than, um, than some of the thicker cardboards, so that it has some give to it. Um, yeah, I think I do have pieces of illustration board kicking around, and I'm gonna address that when I get to it. So I'm just gonna start here by kind of cutting out my background. I'm finding that this this section here um, with the water is like really busy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut my forest background here. So I've sliced, I've kind of sliced a, a piece off, and I'm going to put my words on here um, because I'm doing this analog. I'm going to be working with a typewriter, so I'm going to put my typescript on the words and then put this down like that. So same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of glue all three of these to my board, and then I'm going to work on the typescript while that dries. So I can't actually find my glue, glue bowl right now, so I'm just going to be using two of these smaller bowls. This is my water one, and this is also where I'm going to keep, I kind of loosen up my glue brush, keep it my, with my damp cloth, and I'm just going to... If you find that you're having a hard time opening glue because it's really rough, um, a piece of non-stick material will work really well. Piece of Non-slip material is a really useful thing for getting off tough lids on jars and stuff like that. So um, you can use that to open your glue, which it works pretty much every time without fail. Okay, take your damp rag, wipe your, if you get in the habit of wiping the, the edge um, of your glue, it'll really, it'll help you later on, so that way you don't have to fight to take off the glue cap like I have been doing right there. So, here we go. Got my glue, got my, got my water, got my glue. Just gonna take a quick, nice thin, even coat as best as you can, and then sticking this down. If you can master the thin coat of glue, then you're gonna have a really good time with collage because it is one of those things that, um, it's really satisfying when it works, so. I'm being really generous here because as, I, as it dries, I can kind of smooth it down and fix it up. Um, and then I'm gonna cut it out after anyways, so I'm not being overly concerned about where, about like the overlap for the glue or the overshot for the glue. You can squish it around a little bit if you're not sure before it, before sticking it all the way down. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna let this dry. Try and squish out, you know, take a second and squish out all the air bubbles if you notice any. Um, you can also use your X-Acto blade to pop them. Just to squish everything down. Nice. This one's rippling a little bit. This one looks pretty good, and this one so far, so good. Um, also, just for a point of reference, 
These are things that I've gotten at the dollar store. So I've got like little, little clothespins here and little dinosaurs. This is in the toy section. You can use these to kind of populate your dioramas if you want. Like you could make a little tiny clothesline and make a, a you know, a, a cutout t-shirt with like a message on it. Or you can make like a, you know, dinosaur stuff. And there's other stuff in there, but this is just like one of the ones that I picked up that I thought was fun that I'm probably going to end up painting at some point. So I'm just going to move these to dry um, while I work on my TypeScript poem. This is my typewriter. I've set my margins as you can see and I'm gonna just throw in a piece of paper here. Maybe I'll actually angle this towards you guys. So I'm gonna reference my phone here. Feel not alone, for the forest will always love you. So I'm just going to have this here for reference. The reason that I want to show you guys TypeScript close up is because I think it's a really beautiful medium that we don't really see very often, so I thought it would be nice. So this is my poem. I don't need my phone anymore, so I can go away. And now this, I really, I really wanted it to kind of fit all on one thing. I don't necessarily know if it's even possible. I kind of have to cut it like to there or something if I want. I want it to actually fit. Either way, so I'm going to start by cutting these out. Just line by line, because I personally really like the aesthetic of the... They look like fortune cookies almost. I'm not entirely sure what to call the aesthetic. Okay, so I kind of got my strips here. going to cut off the ends. Great. So I'm wondering if I can just do something like this where I kind of take, because I'm going to glue them down here, feel not alone. I don't know if I should just center them like that or try and actually like cut strips, like cut a strip of forest patch here to make it more. So I wanted it to be kind of like right justified. So I wanted it to be like the, this originally, but I don't want it to be, you know what? Instead of this, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna cut these in half, I think. I think I kind of like that. I hope these are supposed to go like this, actually. 
Okay, so I think I'm gonna, so I'm gonna get my handy dandy glue cloth stuff. And always make sure that you brush off, you rub off your um, paintbrush. So I'm gonna do line by line, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of dab my glue here with the tip of my brush. And then when I stick it on, I'm just gonna kind of rub it back and forth a little bit. So that way it kind of, we get it, you know, glued down as best we can. Again, little dip. And this is a good time to kind of like work out your spacing a little bit better. Like once you've had it laid out, this is a good, this is a good opportunity kind of to kind of fine tune it. That was probably a little bit much here. If you mess up, this is also a good opportunity to wipe it with your uh, damp cloth because stuff like this that's pretty delicate. Oh. oh, I totally ripped it. See, okay, so this is really soft. It's very delicate right now. I totally made the mistake of touching the paper. I'm gonna leave it. And I'm gonna move these off actually, keeping my spacing consistent. So lesson learned, it's not that easy to wipe printer paper. Um, National Geographic, because it's like, because it's nice and kind of shiny, that stuff works fine. But it's not so simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of paint in all of my lines where I see, where I kind of see them, see them fitting, and then I'll clean it up from there. Or co co hole. We go that was so close ah I might I might try and fix it oh I definitely made a mistake there but with the typewriter I can go back and do it again maybe I will do it give me two seconds so I made I made a new a new always love you so I'm gonna put that back on now Again, make sure you want to wipe your, your brush because you don't want it to be too gluey. I'm just going to put this directly over top instead of trying to move it in any way. There we go. I'm going to let that dry. Something else that I wanted a picture of was like, I wanted a little tiny person kind of reading underneath the tree. Like I thought it would be cool to have a person, a little tiny person, kind of sitting under the tree reading. Uh, so I couldn't find anything online that I, that I liked, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a little piece of cardboard here, cut off this flap, and I'm gonna draw onto the piece of cardboard, so with just like a, a Bic pen. So just give me two seconds here. So I messed up the first time, I gave it a second try, so I didn't like my first one, so this is my second one. I'm gonna leave a little tiny flap of cardboard on the bottom to tape down the back, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a moment. This is where our little pen tool is gonna come in handy. So I'm gonna leave this. I kinda wanna score it so that I have a, a point of, to fold. I'm gonna take my handy dandy exacto blade here. I'm just gonna make a light, a light, light score just underneath the person. So that means when I go to fold it, oh no, I gotta score it more than that. Too light. I'm just gonna fold this person back like that. So now I've got this little person reading and I'm just going to take out that detail with uh, an X-Acto blade. Using a cutting mat for this stuff is really important normally, but because this is like my artboard, I'm okay with cutting on it. So 
this is like my little person reading. And I've got my thing here. I'm just gonna cut this a little bit shorter. Actually, if I was smart, I would have done it on the back because it was actually already black. I feel like working with stencil or like with um, other paper would be better just because it would be, you know, it would be easy. It would be thinner and like, I, it's just really gritty I'm finding with uh, the cardstock. So I feel like we were using like Bristol paper or something like that would be better. And that's probably why people who do paper cut use that material. Still buckling a little bit, um, which means that it's still a little bit wet, but that's totally fine. Um, it's dry enough that I feel comfortable cutting it. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm actually gonna cut a little bit. I didn't do it on the bottom here, but I'm actually gonna leave a little bit around the edges if I can, um, just to kind of gauge. I can cut it down as we go. The part that I am gonna cut down solidly is gonna be this line here though. One layer. I have a feeling I could be cutting right down, but I'm going to leave it. Just I'm going to leave a little bit extra for myself to work with. I have my three kind of layers here. I'm just going to move this stuff aside. This actually could be a really useful thing to just kind of glue it down, tape it down. So I'm going to start looking at the different levels that I can work, work with. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'm going to glue this down to a piece of board here. It seems like it would be an ideal move here. So I'm just going to take my Cool. I'm going to let that dry as well because I feel like this can become its own layer like this Now that I've glued this onto like kind of like a thicker backing I think that once this actually dries this could be really cool as like a floating piece of its own inside of the shadow box Now I'm looking at that and if you notice any parts where you know the edges are lifting just take a little bit of glue on your finger Kind of flip it up touch it and then touch it back down and that should be more than enough and You can clean your fingers on your thing just kind of touch it back down don't touch the paper too much because pa printer paper is very delicate as you've seen okay so as you can see this is like well, this is kind of why I wanted to leave a little bit extra so I figured right here I can take my handy dandy pen just kind of mark the in between. So the thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to bend visually on the line instead of like scoring it. So that way this can fit in. Could even be bent a little bit more here. So I've got these like flaps now. And this can kind of just sit in here. So say I want this halfway. Say I want this to kind of sit halfway. So if we flip it over, now because I have these flaps that I can kind of work with, I'm gonna get some scotch tape, scotch tape, and then I'm just gonna kind of secure it in. I'm gonna move it a little farther back because I want I want to be able to uh, kind of have some freedom here to play with my depth. I don't want to risk putting it too close up to the front and have it be overwhelming. And so mine, because it's a little tight, it has to kind of be angled one way or the other. And I actually think I need to move this up a little bit. So I'm kind of unpeel my tape, which is nice. 
gonna move it up and I'm gonna stick it back down. Handy dandy sunset in the back back there. And because I know exactly that this exactly fits, I'm just going to kind of take a little trim. I'm gonna trim my edges here. And actually, to make sure that I'm hanging it, make sure that if you do have hanging things that you're hanging it the right way. So like, so my things should go upwards like that. I'm just eyeballing where I think these are, so no pressure here. I'm not worried about this being perfect, which is nice. I'm just gonna cut out my shape, a little slot for it. Yeah, it's more or less more or less nailed it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do a long strip across the top here. on the bottom. So far so good. Got my got my multiple layers inside here. Looking pretty pretty decent for what it is. So I'm only going to use the one flap on this one just because it's just because it's a little tighter and I'm just going to cut this edge off here. I'm gonna put my piece of tape on beforehand. So. There we are. Kind of got my three layers going here so far. Pretty, pretty nice. Uh, mine's not going to be lit, so it's going to need to be in a place that you know has decent light. And mine is intended to be. This is intended to be like kind of like that front bottom layer. So you got to make sure that it's kind of pushed right up against. I'm just going to kind of fold this in. Because I know my tree is going to go there, I kind of push this back on like an angle. And my tree will sit there. And then I'm going to take a look at my, my poem here. Just being careful when I get to the paper to cut around it because I actually do like it. I think I'm going to tape this down as well. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put tape on either side of the, the center and then I'm just going to stick it down. So I kind of have this depth going on. Um, it's not amazing or anything, but I like it enough. I just don't want this to be the only thing. So mine is kind of free hanging there. It's not really like I just taped it on to one edge so it kind of moves so you could actually like move and look behind it if you want. But uh, that's kind of my my idea of being able to create a really easy shadow box at home with just like some cardboard. You could do this. And then I have a little bit of um, saran wrap here that you know, you could tape down to kind of look like water, to mimic water. This is made out of entirely pretty much cardboard and glue. Cardboard, uh, National Geographic magazine and glue. And now I've added the person at the bottom of the tree, so it's kind of my finished, finished person there.
my tiny world. If you guys enjoyed this content, like and subscribe. I would super love to hear your thoughts and hear um, other ideas that you guys would like to see kind of made 